My name is Brian Bosire. I'm from Kenya and I'm the founder of Ujuzi Kilimo, which actually is Swahili for smart farming. It's an agriculture technology company and our goal is um, to ensure that one million farmers have access to precise and actionable data to inform them on the basic uh, information on how to apply fertilizers and water. So the company was started in uh, 2015 with a couple of my friends. And one of the reasons that inspired us to start Ujuzi Kilimo was because of some of the uh, personal experiences that we actually experienced as farmers in the farms. So a typical smallholder farmer in Kenya, uh, which is actually my home country, is that they have less than two acres of land. In total, in Africa, we are talking about over 33 million smallholder farms. And these are farmers that are producing 70% of the food that is consumed across the continent. But one of the biggest challenges these farmers face is lack of fundamental knowledge and basic skills on how to apply fertilizer, how to manage their crops, and even understand how the markets are performing so that they can better optimize production. So, in Kenya, the ratio of extension officers, and these are officers that are supposed to provide information to farmers, is one extension officer to 1,200 farmers. So you can imagine a case where there is a farmer in a village who has never received any technical advisory, <coughs> despite the fact that actually they spend a lot of money buying inputs from fertilizers, improved seeds, yet they're not able to apply the knowledge in the correct way. So cumulatively, when we look at um, what this has led in the continent is that over the last 30 years, we have seen the continent losing 37 kilograms of uh, micronutrients every year due to poor application of fertilizers. So Africa is one of those continents that is highly under-fertilized. So farmers apply very little amount of um, uh, fertilizers. And in that case, it has led to 60% of the soils in Africa being degraded. So it's such a big issue, yet we actually have the biggest responsibility to ensure that these smallholder farmers produce more food, especially considering that in the next 10, 20 years, we expect the population to actually go up to by 2 billion people, double the food production, and still be able to also tackle issues around climate change. So our solution is quite a, a simple um, system. An electronic gadget or electronic device that has a SIM card and has got a sensor that collects soil data. So we are able to measure accurately the soil macronutrients from the pH to nitrogen content, and in real time relay the data to our online platform, where we are able to do analytics. So the kind of analytics that we do is, we know definitely uh, all the crops that are, uh, or even the breeds of seeds in the market have got optimum conditions. This is free data that is available. And we also know that we can measure the soil status. So what we're doing is matching these two data sets and ensuring that we know exactly, based on the soil conditions, what crops will do well at the farmer's uh, farmland, or what kind of inputs they need to optimize production of a specific crop. And in return, upon doing the analytics, the farmers are able to receive simple text message outlining the specific uh, inputs they need to apply and how to do it. And most importantly, of course, they are able to place even an order of specific inputs that they need. This could be lime or fertilizer. So the device itself, this is a patent pending uh, innovation that we developed, and it uses sensors. To just give you a context, right now, if you are a farmer in a remote village and you want to know your soil status, you have to go and do soil sampling, which is a pretty technical thing. And secondly, mail that soil sample to a soil lab and wait for the technical report. That process could take weeks. But with our solution, we are able to cut down that time into five minutes at the farm. So the kind of data that we are able to collect with our device is mainly the soil pH, the macronutrients, the soil type, 
And of course, we are able to georeference each of those data sets, which means that actually we also are able to collect other remote sensing data, especially from satellite imagery, to overlay what we're collecting from the soil. And this is enriching this data in order to ensure that the recommendation that we provide to the farmer is highly precise. So our database uh, has got different uh, data sources. One of the data I just mentioned is satellite data. So we are able to collect uh, um, satellite imagery, and this covers from, um, things like uh, the weather forecast. We have uh, NDVI indexes and all this kind of data that is actually very important to even remotely tell us what is going on in the ground. And our custom experience journey is uh, as simple as this. So I'm going to take an example of Irene, who's a farmer in some village. And for them, the system is beginning, and they need a soil to know actually what kind of inputs they need. So they'll send a simple text message requesting for a soil test service. And once the notification has arrived on our, on our database, our algorithms will match them with the closest agent who has our soil testing sensor. They'll come and provide the service, and the farmer will pay using mobile money. And the cost of this is $6 compared to the lab, which actually costs between $12 and $20. And once that has been done, within five minutes, a farmer receives a very simple text message telling him or her the soil status. And in the background of our analytics uh, platform, what happens is that, of course, we have a very specific data from the kit. We also have uh, data from um, the lab, if you have ever done any historical information about soil testing. And the algorithm generates first the best or the most suitable crops that actually can do well in that soil. Secondly, within these three choices, of course, the farmer will always have their own preferred crop. So we are also able to generate recommendations on that crop. Once that has, once that has been done, we send a text message back to the farmer. And first, the simple recommendation we provide is what are the three best crops that will do well? Secondly, for these three, cro three crops, what are the rates of fertilizer application that are required for optimum production? And third, for your specific selected crop, what then can you do to improve productivity? So the farmer has a choice, but then it's an informed choice to make. And this is the kind of uh, message that goes to a farmer like Irene. Hello, your soil pH is uh, so high, maybe it's six. For maize, you need to apply lime, this amount, maybe 30 uh, tons of lime. And of course, you can actually get it here. So one of the things that we did is also uh, work with the local agro dealers or input stores, mapping them out and knowing actually how, what kind of stock they have which means we can also relay this information back to them to also know exactly what is the best and most required inputs to have in, the, in their stock. So the main advantages of our solution we have seen uh, over the past few years is farmers are actually able to use less and less fertilizer and more directed application of this input. Secondly, there is the aspect of guesswork. The, kind of farming that smallholder farmers practice is highly intuitive or driven by gut, but it's no longer actually going to work. So eliminating guesswork is one of the steps to ensuring that they are able to produce more. The other thing is about uh, access to inputs. We understand that a lot of um, uh, agrochemical companies, for example, produce a lot of uh, inputs, but very little farmers are able actually to access them. One of the reasons being that there is no data to support the need of those inputs. So they, there's no need for them to invest in a distribution into areas that they don't even know whether the inputs are required. So bringing that visibility opens up uh, uh, the channel to ensure that farmers are able to access the inputs required. And of course, beyond the soil testing, crop management is one of the most important aspects. And because already we have the ground through data to support our insights, we are able to provide continued support, support to these farmers in terms of uh, crop uh, management. And going beyond the farmer, we are also bringing visibility for the uh, industry. 
So one of the uh, case studies that we are working with is, uh, we are working with a local uh, fertilizer blending company, and they are getting this soil data in real time on their platform, which means that they're able to blend fertilizers specific to different regions and different soils across the country. The other part is uh, the markets. Markets, especially for the farmers, price is one of the biggest issues. Access to market is another. And at least with the kind of data we have, we know the kind of crops that farmers are doing, which means that we can actually provide this data to um, uh, market players in order to aggregate what farmers can supply. The other aspect is with insurance and uh, financing. So one of, uh, farmers are really very risky, especially the small ones. And this is because there is no enough supporting data to even quantify how much they need to do what, and is there a guarantee at least for return. But at least for with the kind of information that we are able to collect, we are able to de-risk that and provide more visibility in understanding the farmer for better financing. So currently in Kenya, we have been able to work with more than 11,000 farmers. And we are growing. Our goal is to hit 1 million farmers. And in that journey, of course, one of the key things that we are monitoring is the kind of data that we are collecting and how farmers are reacting to that information that we give them back. And this is not just a challenge for Kenya. I believe this is something that cuts across most African countries. And we are looking at different ways to scale this. Recently, we were able to partner with uh, the World Bank and Google to ensure that we are able to scale this solution, not just in Kenya, but also in other African countries. So maybe you, one of you is a partner, I'll be happy to connect with you. <laughs> but more importantly, for me, I'm looking at the power of technology in actually solving real life uh, challenges, especially within the African continent. And of course, we are at a point where climate change is one of the biggest issues, and smallholder farmers will be one of those people that will be, will be very highly affected. But using technologies, we have talked about Internet of Things, machine learning, AI, all these are tools or a means to an end. And the end really is in solving some of these problems.